women's reproductive rights is in our constitution in California. So certainly we are lucky to have that in our, our state. And in our county, we certainly are working very hard on so many things to protect our environment. Uh, so these are things that I don't believe would affect us directly right now, but certainly we are seeing the effect happening in so many states, and there's so much more we need to do as United States of America, as Americans, that we need to help so many of us. Well, first of all, uh, it's great to be with everyone, all of you great supporters of Otto Lee. Happy birthday, Thank Otto. You. Happy you. birthday. And uh, you have an army here to pull you over the finish line in your uh, next, uh, in your re-election. So thank you. Uh, let me just say this. Thank God you were born. Thank God you were born. So happy birthday. Well, the, uh, uh, the morning of the day that the Supreme Court came out with its announcement, uh, there were many of us that anticipated them doing what they did do, and yet even with the anticipation, even with the copy of the uh, leaked uh, draft, uh, it, was, uh, it was still a shock. It was a shock. And the reason it was a shock is because for the first time in the history of our nation, the very first time in the history of our nation, the Supreme Court removed a right. America is always about moving forward. We may take some side steps, we may stumble sometime along the way, but this is the first time that the court has taken a right away. Uh, many people ask, well, what is it that we can do? There's much that we can do. I think, number one, the Congress needs to take very seriously term limits for the Supreme Court. <laughs> term limits for the Supreme Court. Nothing is written anywhere. Nothing is written anywhere uh, that um, uh, that an individual would hold in office for life. The other thing that we can do, the other thing that is so important as Californians is that we stand up to this. Uh, the California legislature is placing on the November ballot an amendment to California's constitution. And we need to vote for that. It's very important. I think it's going to generate um, a much larger um, a turnout of voters. Very practically, we need to be a state that is home to reproductive services for women. But California welcomes them here. So whether it is through the county clinics, through the county hospital, uh, to working with Planned Parenthood, to uh, working with all of our elected officials. But in this case, the Board of Supervisors is very, very important uh, because you're in charge of public health in the county. At the national level, I think we need to examine the use of federal lands for clinics. We have to ensure that women across the country have access uh, to the drugs uh, that they need uh, relative to their uh, reproductive uh, lives. Uh, so there is much that we can do. But there's also something else. There's also something else. We cannot, in the Congress, codify Roe v. Wade unless there's a majority that is returned, elected in the House of Representatives. That is absolutely essential, and we need to win two more Senate seats. So there is, there is everything that's at stake. Uh, you know what I think the good news is? It's all doable. We can do this. We are up for it. And I think that as we uh, take this issue on, uh, that those that write the history for this era will say that there were many heroes and heroines 
uh, that went up against the dark side and turned things around. So uh, we can do it. I have every confidence that we can. And just to add what the county has done, one thing is that the legal opinion came out. Uh, I'm so honored to be serving with Susan Allenberg, Cindy Chavez, uh, along with Joseph Minn and Mike Wasserman with a Pfizer vote to increase Planned Parenthood funding immediately by $3 million. And that's coming. And then keep pushing on it. So, at the county level, we can get things done, right? Thank you. Anna, I love what you said about America being a place that moves forward. We moved forward with some gun safety legislation at the federal level, but then we saw unspeakable tragedy on the 4th of July due to gun violence. What, where do we go next, Anna? What do we do at the federal level to address the gun issues in our country? We cannot really sustain what has taken place in our country. We're killing each other. And you know why it's happening? It's all about weapons, military grade weapons. We are allowing, in the case of Highland Park, for an 18 year old, it was okay for him to go and buy these weapons legally. So we cannot stop the push. Now Congress, it was the Senate legislation, as you know, that was passed. It was the first time in 30 years that the Congress has actually passed something. And it's good, but my friends, it's only a first step. We need to, in my view, ban assault weapons. We need to ban assault weapons. background checks. Ghost guns need to be outlawed. So we have, we have more work to do. We have more work to do. I welcome the first few steps that were just taken. Um, but when you, know, when you see the carnage in our country, people go into church and they're murdered there. People go to a movie theater, they're, mo uh, they're murdered there. People went to celebrate the birth of our country in a parade in their hometown of Highland Park, and look what happened to them. So we, our work is not done. Our work is not done. And I'm as committed to it as ever. I'm very proud to have earned an F grade on my voting record with the NRA. This is a very powerful DF, right? No, but uh, really, I, I think I, I can't agree more on what it means. Uh, I served in the military for 28 years. I get to wear a 9 millimeter for one entire year when I was serving in Iraq 24 7. I have to have this by my hip pocket. Or well, I cannot go to the dining facility and get a meal to show them that I'm carrying my gun and my bullets. It's a lot of responsibility, it's a lot of work. And with the Supreme Court coming up, the, the ruling basically telling people that everybody can just go carry guns. This is not going to make our country any safer. Let's be real. Let's be real. It's not. And, and this so-called uh, good guy with gun, well, that didn't work uh, in the 4th of July parade. It, that doesn't work. It doesn't work in the schools in Ovalde. The there are plenty of guns with uh, uh, police there, but they weren't in confronting the gun. We need to stop it at the source. And there's no reason why the weapon of war, a weapon of war like these machine guns, AR-15, should be sold. And so I absolutely strongly support. And again, guys, this happened before, 1994. That legislation passed, and it was banned for 10 years, only 10 years during the sunset. And once that sunset happened, you can see the rate of killing using those has just gone up. So I, I can't agree more. And that's why I'm so proud on our gun buyback program. And people say, oh, you're just wasting money. No. We bought back 415 weapons, and 14 of those are the assault style weapon, AR-15 and Uzis. And we even got seven ghost guns. Those things are like the Motley crew of guns. You've got weird, I mean, you just never seen these color and whatnot. Some of these are, uh, they call the 3D printed guns. 
You could then some of these could be download objects and then you could buy it off the web. It's really scary. And these a lot of these being not metal, they actually can go through metal detector as well. So it really is already in our community. And one one specific gun that was really proud of that gun by that was a sawed off shotgun. I've seen those only on the video games. That's a real one that actually helped in my hand that they actually got turned in. So I'm very honored to say that's the type of program we need in our county level. And we are now working on getting another one in South County. Since we did Lopitas last time in the Northeast, we're going to do South County. Hopefully with the police and Gilroy Police Department. Hopefully by the end of this year we're, uh, with our president we're departing, uh, Mike Boston, to uh, do another event by back here as well. Thank you. Well, Congresswoman Otto and I grew up in families that really don't like Fs, but an F from the NRA, I think we can all applaud that one. Good job, Anna. Let's wrap up on a high note. Tell us what gives you hope in these challenging times. And Anna, why don't we start with you this time? You know what gives me hope, and I want to point them out, all of the young people that are here, all of the young people that are here, you know what, uh, you give us really collective hope. And there is a, a, a team of uh, uh, individuals, uh, students, that are part of what's called Democracy Summer. Now, I think that you've all uh, heard and uh, listened to uh, Congressman Jamie Raskin, raise your hands, you know who Jamie Raskin is. He's really a great source of inspiration uh, to us. Uh, the, the day before the attack on, on, on the Capitol, he and his wife buried their son. And he took his own life. So he came back to the Capitol and there was an enormous sorrow with what happened that day. And Jamie launched what he thought the country needed, to bring young people together so that they would really become practitioners of democracy. And uh, there are several of them that are here tonight, and I want to say bravo to each one of you. You really give us hope. You really give us hope. something else out. There are those in the audience that served the public for many years with such distinction and honor. Blanca Alvarez, Blanca Alvarez, Rob Deardon on the Board of Supervisors. Blanca's brother is a I said Blanca, Alvarado, yes. I said Blanca first. Yeah. Give them a round of applause. Because you know, they paved, they were part of paving the pathway of progress in Santa Clara County. They were responsible for so many firsts. And I'm so proud, I'm so proud that since I was first elected, to the Congress and I made a pledge to the AAPI community that we were going to change Santa Clara County, that we were going to make sure that one after another would be elected. Paul Fong was, Otto has been, so many others, Margaret Abe Koga. I mean the list, the list is now too long uh, to go through. But you know what? You all give us hope. And I think, you know what, in the most challenging times, and we're living in them, we are, it's up to each one of us, each one of us to say, we're not throwing the towel in on democracy, just because it's tough. Has anyone been to Normandy? Anyone ever walked that cemetery? Yes, there are some that have. I just want to remind all of you that there are 16, 17, 18, 19, 
20 year olds that are buried there. And in some instances, a father is buried next to his son. In other instances, there's a father and a son on each side. They gave their lives for this democracy. And no generation of Americans, no generation, no matter how great the challenges ever said, we're throwing the towel in on this experiment. I know that none of you will, and by re-electing Otto Lee to the board, you are celebrating democracy at its best. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Hannah. That was beautiful. And I, just, I absolutely echo the young people absolutely is what gives us hope, right? So uh, we see our young volunteers working hard. So here, uh, of course, on the environmental movement, the Sunrise Kids, they get, they are the ones who truly are teaching us what kind of uh, uh, challenge we're facing in our uh, global uh, climate issues. Uh, I and mean, even in Congress, I mean, you were there January 6th. That you went through that whole horror of what happened. And finally, we have a young person, young person, Cassidy Hutchinson last week. For those of you who have not seen her last week, please go back and watch it on YouTube. Or just go to John, you know, go to Colbert. That might be the easiest. <laughs> Stephen Colbert has a really good script on what happened. And those testimonies really show what courage a young person can bring in. And with what she's doing, so many more people are coming up that the truth comes out. Fake news is one thing. We really need to get truth out of what actually democracy means. But you know what? Democracy is not something we just inherit, just live on. We have to fight for it. We have to fight for it. And I'm just so glad to see that so many young people are getting it. And I think that's what gives me hope, gives us all hope, that this is just a temporary blip of the Supreme Court decision. The best has yet to come. Thank you very much for being here. Well, well, how lucky are we to have incredible elected officials like Anna and Otto representing us. Let's give them one more hand.